As the world discusses the so-called diplomatic breakthrough in dismantling Syria's chemical weapons, more conventional weapons continue to kill dozens across Iraq. On Monday, car bombs killed at least 54 people in mostly Shia Muslim areas of Baghdad. Now, altogether, 14 bombs shook the capital city. The deadliest of them exploded in Sadr City, where a car blew up near men who had gathered seeking work, killing seven people and two soldiers. Violence in the country has now killed more than 6,000 people this year alone, according to the group Iraq Body Count. This is a troubling reversal to the decline that we had seen in the sectarian bloodshed that once climaxed in 2006 and 2007. Also on Sunday, several explosions came from uh, suicide bombers as well. They struck the heart of Iraq's northern Kurdish region, sparking gunfights in the streets of the capital, Erbil. Officials said at least six people, all members of the Kurdish security forces, were killed and dozens more wounded in the attack. Uh, Alona, when you hear these kinds of stories, they often take a back burner, as you know, um, to the Syria story, to other stories in the region, but, but it's kind of incredulous, it's incredible how often these bombings happen and how little we hear about them. I think it's incredibly sad, and you know, just to, to prove the point to you, you said that 6,000 people have died this year, but it's really picked up in recent months, just since April, mm -hmm. 4,500 deaths, uh, you know, right. or 4,500 of those deaths have occurred, and I think it's a very sad state of affairs because it shows how how short of an attention span uh, mm -hmm. people really have, right? I think that, in particular with the American public, we know that we're not that good with covering foreign policy stories to begin with, right. but uh, you know we can only focus on maybe one or two things at a time. The war in Afghanistan, long been forgotten. Right. Iraq, even longer forgotten, you know? And, and, and to what end? What, what was it all for? And if you look at the type of violence that's going on now mm -hmm. that I think rivals what was happening in the country in 2006 and 2007, um, you know, it just shows what, what an utter failure any kind of intervention really was. Certainly, I think the intervention, the invasion, and you know, to your point, uh, not only do we not talk about Afghanistan, Iraq enough, but I think what's most troubling is our role and our legacy because we often, you know, ask this vague general question, why do they hate us? Why do these people, why are they so violent? And obviously it's easier when there's, you know, a narrative that fits into the sectarian lens of Sunni and Shia. And unfortunately, to a certain extent, uh, Iraq does fit into that lens. And so when we do hear about it in the mainstream media, at least how it's portrayed, I think it's, it's kind of like this notion of, well, why should we care? This happens every day in Iraq. Um, what's most troubling is, of course, uh, the Shia-led government now was installed mm -hmm. in part by the U.S. And we're seeing a lot of these minority Sunnis who feel disillusioned because they had helped the U.S., uh, as you know, uh, drive out al-Qaeda from Iraq, which we now see al-Qaeda fighting in Syria. Um, and they were promised by the government, the Shia-led government, that they would be rewarded to a certain extent, that they would be protected, you know, and they feel as though the government hasn't given them any of that. And because you brought up the death count uh, as of April, this is a great graphic, I mean, actually a sobering graphic. Um, but if you look at it, let me just zoom in a little bit here. I mean, look at this. This is civilian deaths since 2008, 2013. What's so troubling is you see you know, in 2008, 2009, you have this um, kind of spike. And again, we're reaching those peak levels um, in 2008. So, um, you know, I don't know how to get people to care, not just about the fact that people are dying, because people should care about that, but that we may be to blame still, you know what I mean, yeah. to a certain extent. I mean, yeah, you can't... You Obviously, we didn't create sectarian violence, Obviously. you know, and there's a, there are a lot of uh, there's a lot of history behind this, and a lot of cultural aspects that, mm -hmm. that play into it. But you also can't just completely wash your hands of it, right? Um, you know, and, and ask what influence you you may have had or might have had, or you know, the, the way that you should look at it in the future. Is should you ever try to install any kind of government? Right. Because uh, also, then if things do go wrong, you're going to get the blame, and right. you can't. Um, uh, you can't blame people for blaming right. you and if it, you played any role. And it affects how people then blame America generally in Syria, in other countries, you know, such as Egypt, so on and so forth. I, th I think it's not a question that we ask enough or it's not that we make those connections. We make vague connections. Or we shouldn't go into Syria because look at how Iraq turned out. Well, how did Iraq turn out? How is Iraq continuing to turn out? Um, and, you know, the ever-polarized society is certainly not going to help matters on the ground, let alone, to your, to your point, America's uh, reputation. That's right.